everybody, this is Perch, and I uh, hope everyone is enjoying the new theme music I'm inflicting on you. Uh, that's always fun. Uh, sometimes some people have sent some, and then I've started to solicit some as well from, from outside, just, just for fun. Again, the, the, goal is, the goal is fun, and, um, you know, what, what, else? <laughs> what else is there? Anyway, we've got a viewer question. This one's a good one, and this one really is a your mileage may vary kind of question, but let's, let's get to it. And uh, let's, you know, get your opinions out here. So the question is, how many years or uh, what makes legacy characters earn their spot in my thinking? Like Sam Wilson, Captain America, X-23, Wolverine, um, Becoming Avengers, etc. You know, what what does it take for a character to earn a legacy title? And, you didn't have, and in this question, it's, it's a short question. We're done with it already. But uh, what... what um, when does a character get a name that is kind of irrefutable, can't be changed, or does such a thing exist, I think is there as well. So it goes both ways. Like, what does it take for somebody to earn a legacy name, but also, um, you know, what, is it, uh, what does it take to lose one, so to speak? So uh, from my perspective, and I think everybody's going to have a little bit of a different answer, but from a non-fan practical perspective from, you know, just being realistic about, uh, you know, how people work, how marketing functions, all these kinds of things. The, the answer from that perspective is once the, you know, the, what a lot of people describe as normies, but the non hyper-focused comic buying audience is another longer winded way to say it. Uh, once they commit to a character identity, the character is pretty locked in at that point. So what I mean by that is if you go to somebody and you say, hey, you know, uh, this person doesn't read comic books, but they are aware of comic characters and they have a clear visualization of who a certain character is. Now, here's an example. Um, Oliver Queen as Green Arrow, uh, most people, the general population, would not put those two together. Many people would not be able to identify Oliver Queen as uh, even the name of that identity. They, they wouldn't be able to make that connection. And the visualization of, you know, when Greeno first came around, kind of a Robin Hood looking character, you know, the, the whole the facial hair and kind of everything else, the costume, um, you know, most people would struggle to kind of identify that as a superhero versus a Robin Hood on, the, on that non-comic reader scale. So that's why when, you know, um, uh, the CW came along and they did the Arrow show, they were able to make pretty major changes to that character, both in kind of visual appearance and kind of the whole background and everything else. And it didn't inherently matter. It didn't take away from the character. It was different, but, you know, you hadn't had that consciousness out there, so it, it worked. Now, interestingly enough, even though Arrow was relatively popular, it didn't become so popular in media that the comic book needed to change. Now, they, they did try and change and mess around with the, uh, the comic book, but it wasn't necessary. You both could live side by side, no problem. Peter Parker, on the other hand, Spider-Man, because that origin had been told so many times, because there had been several movies, because the identity of Peter Parker, the cartoon had been out, it, it was well established in everybody's mind that Peter Parker equals Spider-Man. So from a marketing perspective, if you're going to come along now and say, well, here's Miles Morales, he's the new Spider-Man, there's no way to insert Miles Morales into that identity in the, in the mainstream, in the, in the mass market. There's no way to do it without him being the new Spider-Man, or worse, the black Spider-Man, or you know, some designation which is like, it's, it's Spider-Man, but it's not Spider-Man. It's a different Spider-Man. And like I've talked about in other videos, that gets to be a pain in the ass for the character they're trying to promote. It starts to be a drawback for miles for that character. Um, that's, that's where, you know, the character is having to work twice as hard, which again is not what you want, particularly if you're introducing a, uh, you know, a minority into the character, you don't want to have to say, well, this character has to work twice as hard to earn the same spot. That doesn't sound right. Like <laughs> that's not how it should be. Uh, but when you try and, and kind of alter a very well-known legacy character, this is what happens. Same thing with Superman. Um, yes, you can try to explain to the mainstream audience that there's a multiverse, and Marvel's 
made some good strides with that. You know, they've made that a priority and it's, it's sort of worked out for them. I, I mean, it's, it's a work in progress, but you know, into the spider verse did a very good job of identifying this. But if you notice that movie handled it in a, in an honest, um, a direct way that the comic books have not always done. The movie introduced you to Peter Parker, introduced you to multiple Peter Parkers for that matter. And they really, you know, reinforced the fact that there was an established character. It was Peter Parker, Peter Parker, is Spider-Man. That character still exists. It's still, you know, relevant to the cartoon, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, in another dimension, here's Miles Morales. He's not ready to be Spider-Man there. They're calling him Spider-Man. They, they went to some good work to be able to, to paint, you know, to basically connect the dots for the viewing audience. And that was, I think, pretty important if you're going to pull this one off. Um, in the comics, they tend to want to get to a, well, we can just say it's true and then it's true, which really, I mean, you know, the audience, everybody will, will tell you it, that doesn't work. That's not how it's not how people think. That's not how quick people change. Um it, and that's not a viewer problem. That's a it's a marketing problem. So I, I, knew, I realize that's kind of a boring answer. What I gave you is, I mean, but it's it's a pragmatic one. This is how fast people's mentalities tend to shift. It's not necessarily quick. There's a lot of steps there, and um, you know, if you're if you're hell bent to do it, you know, you can do it. It's just, uh, you know, you be ready to have to do a lot of work explaining it. Uh, what what I find interesting is that in the movies, they seem to understand that they have to do a lot of work and they will do it or sometimes they won't, but they will, they will go off and do the work in comics. It seems to be like when the work presents itself, the comic publishers go, I don't understand why I have to do this work. Why don't the readers just change? Come on. What's, what's wrong with them? Why don't they just change? That's a readers, the stupid readers. Why, why? It's a very weird mentality. Because anyone will tell you if you're trying to do a brand shift, whether it's a logo change on a product or whether it's a, you know, it's, it's why department stores, when they change their names, assuming they're not a lot of business at this point, but when they, when they make changes, they have to do a massive multi-million dollar campaign laying out those changes for their audience. It's because people don't just track and move over. So that's the, the pragmatic marketing answer. Uh, generally speaking, given how thin the margins are in comics and everything else, I, I think it's dumb to try in most cases. If, for example, we're talking uh, X-23, Wolverine, Laura Kinney becomes Wolverine, my, my, my question would be, what are we trying to accomplish here? What are we trying to accomplish by calling Laura Wolverine? Um, and, and I, and, and, you know, a serious question. It's a it's an adult question. It it cannot be met with, well, you're a sexist for asking because it's not a sexist question. It's it's a very simple one. What are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to accomplish that uh, the the name of Wolverine? We believe that Wolverine, the name, is uh, you know so powerful that even if we change the you know the who Wolverine is, the the brand, the logo is so powerful that, you know, it will, you know, we'll draw attention and we'll sell more. Is that the reason? If so, that's, that rarely works, at least not in these cases. It, it rarely works as advertised. Is it because we're trying to make a statement that the women can do everything men can do? I would argue that uh, in that case, giving, uh, giving a woman a identity of a man feels like the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish there. It feels like the woman can't earn her own identity. I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I always think that's a weird, uh, you know, a weird flex if that's what you're trying to do. Um, is it because you have an amazing story idea where the name as a legacy gets you somewhere? I mean, that that's an option. I mean, there's, there's good answers to this. It's not just, Hey, never do it. There may be good reasons to do it. Just what are those reasons? What, what are you trying to accomplish? And are you uh, doing the necessary tactics in order to, you know, get your goals? Now, for a fan perspective, okay, ignoring everything I just said, uh, from a fan perspective, you know, what, what earns a legacy character? In my view, it's that the character has had a moment. That character's had a defining scene, a defining uh, moment inside that comic that really kind of fulfills the identity. 
And with Wolverine, um, I think there's there's a number of those kind of iconic moments where you know Wolverine's uh, coming out of the sewer in the Hellfire Club, and it's like now it's my turn, and you know that iconic image, or you know even the over repetition of uh, I'm the best at what I do, what I do isn't very nice. The uh, Wolverine staked up on that X cross that was part of the Sylvester cover uh, during the Uncanny Run. Uh, there's a number of of scenes that are extremely iconic, either through story or art or both, where, uh, you know, it, the character is so rooted in that moment that if suddenly, you know, they've, they've basically earned a legacy through those moments. At that point, I think it becomes really a challenge or impossible or a bad idea to suddenly shift up the characters. It feels like a rerun if you're going to do that. If you're going to suddenly say, all right, well, Wolverine is Laura now, it somehow, it, it, again, it devalues those earned moments of the character. With Spider-Man, you know, you have Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man, you know, basically about to drown, like the water's rising, he's lifting those bricks, the throwing the mask away, you know, in the trash and walking away, the uh, Gwen Stacy death, these kind of, again, iconic moments of the character. It sticks in people's minds. Once you've had enough of those, the character identity becomes a legacy. It becomes something that is hard to transfer. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Again, it just it makes it hard to transfer. And again, I, I like I've talked about in previous videos, I think it puts an unnecessary burden on the new character. It's setting that character up for failure. It's saying, hey, um, whatever else you have going on, you've somehow got to, you know, give as you know, give the same kind of huge moments as the character who had the name before you, but the character who had, you know, had the name before you had 40 years to earn those moments. So it's completely unfair. When Laura gets the mantle for Wolverine, and Wolverine was dead for, uh, what, four years? But then he really wasn't, because they brought Old Man Logan into the picture, and even though they're like, we're going to call him Old Man Logan and not, not Wolverine and everything else. I mean, like, it, it just didn't work. So you're basically, think about what you're, you're asking Laura to do. You're like, well, okay, so as a character... You've got this new name. You've got people who are resistant to the new name uh, because they remember the old character, maybe for a variety of reasons. Uh, but you need to win them over. So quick, have you know an equal number of iconic moments as this legacy character, and you've got uh, twelve issues. Go, like it's impossible. That's it's it's just a silly thing to do. I I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I like new identities. I like unique identities. I think they make characters special. I, I think that, to me, it, whenever you um, you put somebody else in the role, and there's some exceptions. I mean, Green Lantern established itself as a core, and so I, I think that there's things you could do, I, I, you know, there. But um, by and large, I, I think it's uh, it always comes across as a knockoff to me. Always. And if you had... Um, you know, and, and lots of people say they'd never do this, but, you know, if you had Blade, right, that character, and suddenly you introduce, like, a white Jewish guy is the new Blade. It's like, here's the new Blade. It's it's this Blade. I, I think that, um, I, I don't know, I, I think I, it wouldn't work. I'd hate it. Because, to me, again, Blade has had all these moments, had all these years, has established himself in the role. My comment would be like, why can't you call this guy something else? Isn't there another word that rhymes with blade can you call this person a uh, knife or machete or i, I mean I, I'm, I'm joking but like can you why it, it feels like i don't know it just feels cheap for the new character like you didn't care enough to think about the identity to give him something new you know again not all not all sizes are the same with uh, miles morales spider-man bendis you know worked pretty hard to try and make him you know, earn that position with a story that explained what was going on, took its time, and that's that's frankly why it worked. And he had the benefit of the multiverse and all this other stuff. So it it he's going to be more successful than say Laura becoming Wolverine in my eyes, or you know, I, I mean, even what they've done with the Flash. I love Wally, um, but you know, I, you, you did kind of wonder, like, you know, they they did again. They did a whole story of passing on the mantle. Wally Barry to Wally was a lot like. Uh, in many ways, the Peter Parker to Miles in terms of kind of the time it took and the pacing and how that all went down. But still, um, even Wally, if you think about him, lots of people love that character, Wally West. 
he still had to overcome. Like, but, you know, that's not the original Flash. That's not the real Flash. I mean, it was just, it was, it was an extra bit of weight. Would Wally West have been more successful if they would have had him be called something else? It's possible. I, I mean, again, they put in the work, but you just kind of wonder, you know, especially in modern comics where there's very little time to establish anything before you're canceled or rebooted or whatever. Like, I, that just is a lot of, it's a lot of pressure. I don't know if it's worth it in my mind. So anyway, thank you for the question. I think that, uh, you know, very helpful. Um, let me know what you, I think everybody's going to have a little bit of a different answer to this. So let me know what you think in the comments below, like, and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.